Got it. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's go ahead and get started. It's three after. Um, hold on a minute. Let's do that. All right, uh, AIs, AIs, AIs. I don't think there's anything urgent we're going through there unless someone can think of something they want to mention. Okay, guess not. Community time. Are there any community related topics people would like to bring up? All right, not hearing any. Uh, SDK update. We did not have a meeting last week or this week yet, uh, so I'm not sure there's anything new there. Austin, I see you joined the call. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to bring up from the SDK perspective? Um, nothing. I haven't. Uh, I haven't been involved in those meetings as of as of late, so I'm a little I'm a little out of date. Okay, that's fine. All right. Anybody else from the SDK sub team want to mention anything? All right, uh, Kathy, I don't see her on the call. I don't think anything happened there with the workflow. So demo proposal that Scott put forward. Uh, we did have I, a- I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, I don't think the workflow meetings are still happening. So does it make still, sense to still have this as a thing that we talk through every time? I can definitely remove it. Um, I apologize. I actually, I think I took an action item to get with Kathy offline to figure out what we're gonna do there because there doesn't, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of forward motion. Yeah, I, I think that I think that like they came to a good place and they presented it and I don't think it's like an ongoing thing. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I can definitely remove it and wait for Kathy to mention it as a potential topic. Is there any objection to removing it? Okay. Hold on. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, next demo. Um, so we did, I think we did a dual poll and we agreed on Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern for a call to talk about uh, the next demo and that's to go over the proposal that Scott put forward. Uh, it's going to be using the same Zoom as the regular phone calls so feel free to join if you can. Uh, if not, obviously please comment in the document itself. Uh, Scott, is there anything you'd like to mention relative to that? I just want to give you an opportunity to speak up if you want. Uh, no. I don't. I don't think there's anything extra from that proposal. It, it's still open for you know modifications and new ideas. So please come to the meeting. And come with ideas. Yep. All right. Cool. Any questions on that one, or, or for Scott? I just want to like if you haven't looked through it, uh, Scott. Do you want to give like a two sentence summary of it for everybody else? Yeah. Sure. It's so the the general idea is that uh, we will simulate uh, what real people make for businesses, uh, and hopefully it's like cobbled together and duct taped. But uh, the the general idea is that there are a couple roles that people can fulfill. Um, there's the producer or like a factory role. So it's like they, an e-commerce situation. Yeah, it's like an e-commerce factory. So there's these factory services that send over cloud events to the warehouse inventory service, and those get like added to the inventory. And then the there's a store UI, hopefully, and then people can buy stuff through that UI. It gets reserved the inventory and then sent to a delivery service where like maybe some fake updates get sent back to a delivery UI. So it's simulating kind of like maybe what would happen like on a Etsy or an Amazon where there's independent cons uh, creators that add stuff to an inventory and then you can consume things out of that inventory. And the, then the, you could simulate being a FedEx like thing in the middle there. Okay. That sounds interesting and more interesting. I would say than like all tweeting something, which was good for the first version. Yeah. yeah. And so potentially like one of the factories could be um, like a cookie clicker UI like thing where you actually tell the audience, Hey, go to this URL and like click on my cookie. And then every click turns into a cloud event that goes to the warehouse that adds to the UI so that people can like consume a cookie on the other side. Is, and is by one... cookie, the joke is that the, like you're buying a, like a physical cookie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Someone's like that one. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure this wasn't like a cookie, like a browser cookie. Okay. No, 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 not a real cookie. Like the, there was a game or like the cow clicker thing, right? It's just like a busy task that they they do, right? They they sit on their phone, they click the thing, and like maybe we have a display that's see showing the active inventory counts. Anyway, it, it's 
I'm trying to make it interactive. It may or may not work. Conference Wi-Fi is kind of spotty. So, so. But the idea of getting the audience involved is always usually pretty good, assuming it works well. Exactly. Okay. Thank, yeah. Thanks for indulging me and explaining it. Sure. Yeah. Always good to refresh, so thank you. All right, any, any questions for Scott before we move on? Okay, yep, so please join the call at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern on Monday, if you can. Um, EU planning, so we have the two sessions we talked about, the intro and deep dive. Uh, we have a call right after this one to discuss, you know, what we're gonna talk about, or what we're gonna present, who's gonna do presenting, stuff like that. Um, obviously, if you're one of these people, please join the call, um, if, but you're obviously free to join. If you're not one of those folks, just to hear what's going on or if you have ideas. And it's gonna be the same Zoom channel as this one. All right, moving forward. Unless there are any questions on that. All right, cool. In that case, let's get to the real work here. PR review. Chris, uh, yep. Christoph, hold on, let me. So this so I, 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 yep. yeah, I apologize, this one, technically it's a little bit on the new side. I mean, it was put in there two days ago, I think, so it may be okay to bring in, but I thought because it's more of a typo more than anything else, I wanted to get it out there sooner rather than later. Yeah, I made, uh, a couple of weeks or months ago, made a change uh, where I renamed URI to URI reference um, because this is only the placeholder that we use in the spec. It already said this is a URI reference, but the shorthand we used was URI. Um, and that was pretty confusing. So I renamed that. So one of the uh, mistakes I did, if you scroll down to the spec markdown, is that I missed the schema URL. So I forgot to rename that as well. So this pull request mostly changes that. Um, then I also found that here um, in the bottom on the constraints, it said it must adhere to the format specified in RFC, la, la, um, which is a bit duplicate or confusing, um, whichever way you want to look at it, because the URI reference is a subset of that RFC and it's not so clear. So I just removed that part. And if you want to know what exactly the string should look like, you can go to the type definition of the URI reference. Right. I changed that in the spec JSON as well. Uh, Fabio introduced this uh, last time. And then in the protobuf, I also changed the shorthand because I think the protobuf uh, PR did kind of go in parallel with mine. Yeah. So, so I think this one was just a miss. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, a miss as well. And then you, this is duplicate. And this one is okay. The um, URA reference is a valid format for, for JSON schema. Yeah, we already have it in the uh, source, actually. Got it. Okay. In instead of removing the RFC reference in the spec, should we just add the section as well? Sorry, I didn't get the question. So in, in, in the spec.md, you're removing the section that, that lists the RFC. However, in the, uh, in the other form, it's being more specific about which subsection. Should we just add that subsection to this as well? I try to be um, consistent. So if, if you look at the full spec markdown file. Yeah, um, I'm at it. Yeah. Um, so the best way to get there. Anyway. Uh, oh. Okay, so um, in the full spec, um, we have in the type system, <clears throat> Um, defined what a URI reference is. So here we have the full link. And then if you look um, further down inside, for example, the schema, uh, the source, sorry, the source, um, we only say it's a URI reference. And then in the constraints, we don't put anything extra. Uh, so I wanted to be consistent with the source. Got it. Well, Thank we, you. yeah. Well, we can change it, but then we should change it in both places. I don't really mind either way. Well, as, as long as a more specific reference is in the document already, then I'm fine with it. Yeah, but I, and I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Anybody need more time to review this one? No, it looks good to me. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, any objection to approving then? All right, thank you guys very much. And now we have 
Rachel. Okay, you want to bring us back up to speed on what this one's about and then where we are review wise. Um, review wise, I don't think it's gotten any comments this week unless someone added them really recently. I don't think so. I think the last one was from Christoph. Or, uh, Chris, Chris and then I think you added something Christoph. saying anyone want to comment or something. Um, yeah, the other guys from the Rocket MQ stuff, yeah. I like my overall perspective on this is like I'm open to having a higher bar for people that would like to add their proprietary spec. I like my motivating factor is that I want the spec to be adopted. And if adding a place for proprietary specs furthers adoption, I think it's great. I think I feel like it costs us almost nothing. And if we like I, I'm not incredibly concerned about doing free advertising for people because if I were looking for a protocol and I went looking inside of our spec for like, what should I use? I feel like, I feel like you're not really making sound technological decisions at that point. So um, good luck to you. But if people have different perspectives, I'm very open to hearing them and like making this proposal into something that everyone can get behind. Like my main, like my, like the proposal here, like the comment here raises the bar considerably. Like it, it, uh, it says that you must prove, like you have to be able to prove that like if a cloud event gets sent into your system, it should be able to come back out of your system. And the thing that I think about that is like, we're not really in a place to validate that. Like they could, they, like we're not going to spin up their like protocol and like test that as true. Like try, try using it for example. So, I'm tempted to use an honor system here and just assume that people are being um, good faith actors. If people are more cynical than I am, which I'm very open to, uh, then we can we can try to like brainstorm on what uh, like uh, what balances we want people to be able to like embrace the spec no matter what technology they're using, with um, also being cynical about what people will say about their specs. So I'm really open to comment if people, like my basis, if no one else leaves comments, I might say, like I might try to pull in some of this wording here into my spec, but I'm not inclined to like, um, to raise the bar too much more because I want people to just like say, we support this spec. I want, I want people to like, be able to like assent to it pretty easily. I want that bar to be low. All right, anybody wanna comment either uh, maybe Christoph or uh, Clemens, I know you came off mute. Anybody want to comment? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more cynical about this and I'm also um, a little bit worried about real world politics that are potentially being played here and uh, um, also we're trying to be mindful of those. Um, so occasionally it, it appears that some folks who are building stuff um, that is not necessarily aiming to interoperate with anybody are trying to game the systems that are the open source organizations um, and the standards bodies. Um, and without arguing with you, can I just ask for an example? Because I'm not yeah, I can, I, I will be concrete because it's right in here, right? So Rocket MQ is being submitted as an incubator project into Apache. If you look at the if you look at the actual contribution, it comes from one place, and then shortly and then shortly thereafter, I don't know exactly what the what the uh, uh, the order is. Open messaging starts to exist in the Linux Foundation, coming from the same place, and except for a benchmarking project, also has no contributors outside of that place. Wait, so just because one company is doing most of the development work doesn't mean that something is not open. See, and there's, and there's the question for me, if there is, if, if, if it's one, if it's one company doing all of that stuff with effectively no outside traction, um, and it's only really being used in one place, and it's specifically, and you see that it's it's using a proprietary protocol that's not even documented, but it's literally the protocol is the code, right? And then, and then there is an open alternative that you know, a, a broad number of company have, companies have been in, investing in um, and are currently investing in uh, with a you know, common protocol stack that has quite a bit of traction. And that stands against that. 
and then we're doing an interop project and and effectively the game that's being played is obviously trying to wedge that proprietary product into something that is looking like open even though nobody is supporting that open thing except themselves okay then, then, um, then i'm sensing and i just asked for cynical opinion then i'm 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 sensing that um the system is being played and i'm not sure that um I I don't understand what the system is being played means, though. Like, we can say, like, they're playing a game or they're playing politics, but, like, I don't understand what the end result is. So, like, is corporate capture open source totally a thing? Totally. It's absolutely a thing. That's definitely a thing. It makes for crappy open source. I'm as guilty of it as anybody. I totally agree that's a thing. But, like, I don't understand what, like, they're playing the game. Like, what game are they playing? They're open sourcing something and they're putting the work in and like, no, does no, no one ever use they, it? You know, what, they're, open, they're open washing, they're open washing something. Like the open, specifically the open messaging spec has lifted text literally from the cloud event spec, right? Are you upset that they liked your words and they took them? Like, I, like no, what's the it's, harm? It's, it's a, so I'm, I am upset, I'm upset about someone trying to play a, you know, intro via API story that is exactly opposed to interrupt on the wire, which we're trying to achieve here. And, and, then, and then effectively using, uh, a, writing a check to legitimize that by, by having a project created for them that then says open, well, effectively, it's a preparatory play. What so have they gained? I'm, I'm, okay, that's, that's, something, that's something that's, and that's a game that I think I see that as a game that's being played on the open source and open standards community. Um, and so that's the thing that I'm worried about here. So that's the, uh, you asked me for an example, that's the example I'm bringing you for. And I still worried. don't totally understand. I, it's not necessary that I understand, honestly. So I can like, I can drop it, but like, just to let you know why I'm still skeptical about this, it's that like, so if, so say I'm, I'm putting myself in their place, right? I like I have built this thing and now I want to open source it and um, like is anyone else using it? No, but I'm still really excited about it and I want to put it out there. Yeah. Like I have I have like gained very little like by by like getting it. I, like I I don't understand like how they are winning something right like they have put in they they like, they have invested in this thing and they've put it out there for others to use. What do they get out of it? Because like I, I would be skeptical if like they were like secretly getting tons of like hidden benefits, but they're not. Like but, they are, they've just like put something out there in the world that will sit on GitHub and maybe no one will use, which is like a thing that can happen. I don't feel that bad about it. But they can claim openness, right? And they can claim compliance because. They, we allow their proprietary protocol, which is only implemented in their product and cannot be implemented anywhere else because there is no protocol spec, to be bound by an official binding into cloud events. And so they are now cloud event compliant, even though nobody else can talk to them. And so, oh, that's, well, so that's, that's something that I find then, find then weird. And that's, that's why I have a problem with that. And it's also, I think what Christoph here says is, there's got to be an implementation in that product that literally interoperates. And if it doesn't, then it's the question of, uh, you know, what are we doing here? So that's, so, that's so my the question. The question is not, should there be a product that interoperates? It's like, who is responsible for figuring out if it interoperates? And I want to say, that's not our job. I want to say like, if you claim to interoperate, then you're responsible for actually interoperating. And like, we're not, like, we don't have to validate that. So let, let me go to the speaker key. We do have a couple other hands up. Uh, Jim, you may have been first, so go ahead. Hey, thanks. Um, I, I understand uh, Clarence's concerns. I, I guess when, uh, and Rachel, thank you so much, because I, I think you sort of picked up one of my crazy ideas with this. Um, I sort of looked at this originally more in terms of, well, where would IBM, you know, if they wanted to do a, uh, cloud event transport binding for MQ, where would they put that? Uh, and it, to me, it just seemed that wouldn't be something that this group necessarily would write uh, because it's not an open standard. Um, but we would want a place in our, in our environment or community to, to sort of house that binding so people could understand how it should work. And and I think that was my original sort of desire when, when this thing came up. 
not to necessarily link it to purely open source initiatives. It, Kevin, does that do? Do you understand where I was coming from with that? Comments? Uh, yes, yes, I yes, I understand. Um, I would expect so. Frankly, I would expect the MQ team to um, uh, bind to cloud events via either um, MQ Lite, which means their MQP head, um, or their MQTT head, um, or their or their HTTP, HTTP head, but not using one of their four proprietary MQ protocols. Okay, but wouldn't this be the place where they would um, explain that? Um, yeah, but however, that, however they end up. So, so, so if the question is, the question for me is, do we need to have do, so we can have a catalog of of products that support cloud events, and we can point to the, in in that catalog, we can point to the respective product documentation. I think that's that would be totally fair. But as a proper spec, we really need, only need if if the spec can really be implemented by another party. And for the four um, uh, different protocols that are MQ proprietary, um, for those four, there is no product. There's a there's no there's no spec, and and we happen to know that because that's also we have a license to one of the protocols. And there is literally it's literally the only way you can go and do this is by reverse engineering and listening to the stuff on the wire because the documentation at IBM is the code for it. So that the, the situation for that is exactly the same as with Rocket MQ. You can't write, write a protocol spec for it because there is no port, protocol spec to reference. So I think my hands up next. Uh, so question for you, Clement. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this and, and see, try to see both sides or understand both sides. Um, I'm wondering, Clemens, if if your concern is more focused on whether someone can then run around and claim that we are endorsing them in some way. Yeah. Or, because, yeah, because like, I'm getting the sense that it's not so much, oh, such and such protocol is saying, hey, we're cloud event compliant, or we're, we, you know, we're, we, we support cloud events. I don't, I don't get the sense that's what you're worried about. You're worried about someone coming back and saying that because their document is now on our repo, we as an organization or group have somehow deemed them as worthy and that they're gonna somehow prop from that in some way. Is that accurate to say it yes that's one part and the second okay. part the second part is since I, I see this group also as an advocate for interoperability mm -hmm. I, I don't i would find it sad if we if we would reward um uh, products that even though there is effectively an industry a recognized industry standard for doing a particular thing for instance how to create interoperability around the message broker um, that nevertheless ignore that and use their proprietary product and we reward them effectively with you know, interoperability award uh, at a level that is um, like at the protocol level that's unreachable unless you have pro interoperability one level below. So, so basically endorsing their proprietary choices. And for me, interoperability means if you literally can go and plug and play things together um, and and not you know claim interoperability at a level in the protocol stack where factually interoperability is not possible. So I'm I, I'm just looking at this from probably a pretty religious uh, um, interoperability stance um, of of you know having interoperability down the stack right TCP and then overlay the the framing protocol may that be http or mqtt or AMQ, or AMQP, and then overlaid on top of that sits cloud events um, with the respective uh, encodings etc um, but but i believe in interoperability from the ground up and not having you know an in interop in, in non interoperable thing right sit, that sits in the middle that prevents that you can even benefit from cloud events so it sounds like you're saying if if we don't necessarily host their documents here, but we have maybe a, a list of, of, of pointers to documents hosted other places and say, oh, by the way, here are some other formats or here are some, some transport bindings or whatever that, that do support cloud events and we make no claim as to whether they're good, bad, or anything. And it's just a list. You'd be more okay with that, it sounds like. 
Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. So I'm I'm not I don't want to exclude I don't want to exclude anybody from getting a pointer. It's just I'm I'm worried about the 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 effects of of um, you know having a, a proper stack in the in the in the repo right in the repo on on what we're trying to achieve in terms of interoperability. Got it. Okay, uh, Christoph, your hands up. Yeah, I think I'm a bit less religious than uh, Clements. I'm I'm more from a practical perspective. So. The thing, like I, I don't know about Rocket MQ or Open Messaging or whatever. Like, if a customer comes to me and says, "I want to uh, integrate your the platform that we're building with Rocket MQ," I'm generally in support of that. Um, and my sort of dream is that I have an implementation for cloud events. There is maybe something in between that they have to set up, like an SDK or whatever but that basically it's plug and play. Maybe I have to plug something in the middle, but then they can just implement, uh, well, they can take our platform. We have we uh, emit cloud events and somehow they end up in Rocket MQ. But if you just allow people to drop a spec and then don't do the work of providing the adapter or uh, providing a standard interface, then if we just have like 10, 20 protocols and in the end, we can't send cloud events from one system to the next. So that, that is kind of my fear. Okay. Hi, this is, this is John, I'm on the phone. Yeah, go ahead, John. Thanks. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, think I'm, I think I follow a lot of that. I think my concern as a big enterprise, right, is I, I, I have to deal with companies all day long saying, that they support XYZ protocol, spec, standard, whatever. And the biggest part of that part of my job is verifying how they're all lying sacks of shit, right? Because it's, it's marketing hype. So, so I guess part of my uh, rabid support on the Clemens side of the fence is the, you know, what are our rules around people being able to use out events uh, logos, trademarks, stamps of approval, certification to be able to make those kinds of claims that are going to confuse in the marketplace, right? Interoperability is obviously a critical piece for a lot of people, right? So, uh, you know, where, where is that going to fall? So where do we, where do we draw those kinds of lines and what's the seal of approval, right? For interop cross usage versus, hey, we have an adapter that allows us to, you know, hook these things together in this more proprietary hodgepodge way. And maybe that solves problems for certain users, but it solves it in a way that is not generic enough, right? To be, to claim true interop. Does that make sense? I, I think it does. And I don't know if anybody else has a hand up. So let me ask this question of Rachel. Um, for the goals that you're trying to achieve, Rachel, um, how important is it that you, that they actually host their documents in our repo as opposed That's to important. the pointers? Is it? Okay. Can I, can I address some of the things that were said before I answer yeah, that question? Okay. I am totally sympathetic to not wanting to give out awards for openness or interoperability for someone that is just writing a shim over their proprietary thing. I don't want to do that. I don't see this as giving an award or um, saying you are interoperability like champion of the year. Here's the thing though, like we're all running proprietary products that we charge money for and that we think offer unique value. And the thing that, and like we've still come together saying that like, we agree that interoperability is valuable despite that, despite like it being like we, we are all running proprietary things here. And like the difference between the things that are going in the main spec and the things that I see going in the, the proprietary protocols like uh, folder, I, like the difference is that one set is own, like the, the, like the direction of the spec is open and uh, anyone can join that conversation that they want to. The difference is not that like we're not charging for our products, right? So I like I don't like I don't see this as a stamp of approval. I see this as tr a way to gain adoption, and 
and the, the important, the reason it's important that it go in the spec is that I want people, like it's a place to standardize it. It's a place to say like, are you interested in cloud events? Are you running any of these technologies? Here's where you go to look to see like what the, like what the standard like serialization is. Like that's the important part of it. Like it's a, it's a place to go look. That's why, that's why I wanted to go here. If we like, if it makes, um, like maybe the right thing to do is to add wording about not being able to use logos, not being able to like claim, um, not being able to make certain claims and we can like work on the wording for like what the what it should be there if we if that's important so that like that's where that's where i come down like i like i really think that it is a greater risk for the spec that no one ever gives a shit now that we're going to use that word i'm going to use it too <laughs> uh, like it's a it's a greater risk that no one ever gives a shit about this than it is that um that it's perfect and wonderful and uh like, 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 I just, I just see like being perfect is not my goal here. Like getting adoption and make like, what's the point of interoperability if no one ever uses it? Is like where I'm coming down. So you put out a, a, a pseudo proposal in there of, is there an appropriate wording we can come up with to, uh, to say, you know, your spec being present in this repo or someplace in our org. Um, does not give you the right to claim compliance, use our logo, or anything like that. What do people think about heading that direction? Does that help at all, Clemens? Or Varun, since you came off mute, you want to speak? Um, sorry. What no, he went back on mute. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I didn't catch what you were saying. I had to catch what Rachel was saying. So we'll answer Rachel then. Forget me. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested to see what your response is. Um, yeah, so this, the, so for me, the, the, higher, the highest order bit is driving interoperability. Um, and and um, for me, interoperability is the thing that, that ought to be driving the adoption, like the, the desire to have um, a, a common stack that has uh, a, a minimal amount of options, but the options that are appropriate for use cases, and then go and use those. Rather than, you know, adoption of this specification at all costs, because I don't know, I don't know how much that helps us if we um, have, you know, cloud events being used within a totally closed ecosystem, um, where those events basically can't leave that ecosystem ever because it, that doesn't help anybody. Um, okay, so I agree with that. Like, I agree. Like, I want. I, I want to drive interoperability and I guess our disagreement is like how that happens and like my my assumption like so say I have say I have like my current stack and I want and I like the idea of interoperability um, the like the first way I'm going to get started using this is I'm going to like write a shim that like converts like at, at the like at the edge I just convert the thing like I don't change any of my internals and I and I like write a shim at the edge that like converts whatever I'm doing to a cloud event, right? And this is absolutely like, and, and this exactly proprietary that. like protocol and encoding like folder is the what, place what, where like they can do that. So that for what you just said, for that shim, right? For that shim, for writing that shim so that it can talk to a different product, for that can need to have a specification. Because you're now sitting down and you're taking all the internal group that you have, which might not even be in cloud events, com compliant cloud events format. You, you're, you're changing that around, and then now you are handing that off to someone else who speaks cloud events in one of three protocols, uh, or one of four protocols. And that's why, you, why we need to have the interrupt specs for. How you do your thing inside of your, your product, and, and, and even how the products, how, how the events flow, and how you store the events internally, because we certainly, in our product, we don't store if cloud events as cloud events, but we have a different format internally. That's nobody's business. Um, but really what, care, what, what matters is how, that your shim, you sit down, you have a set of specs that you, you can go and write against, and then hopefully the result of that, if that's compliant, can go, go and talk to everybody. And that's what, I think that's what the spec set should, should, should do for us. And, and, and how IBM would realize uh, cloud events inside of MQ and even inside of a federation of, of MQQ managers and how, how Rocket MQ does that um, um, and how, how 
service bus and, and, and our stuff does that internally between nodes in the federation, doesn't matter because ultimately what we care about is the handoff points between one product and the next product and one system and the next and the next system. That's the stuff that we that we need to agree on in terms of our inter interoperability. Okay, and I just want to like I agree with all that. And the thing that I just want to add is like the only like the only specs that should start using this should not be ones that are owned by the Linux Foundation, right? Like any like any protocol that people are using like should have a way to like start using cloud events like you shouldn't have to like you shouldn't have to change what you're doing you should just be able to like start layering on cloud events that's like that's like what i'm pushing for yeah and that, and and i think i think where i'm where i'm at and that's the dis disagreement i i think to make to to make the complexity matrix of integration and we have some people with with enterprise integration background here uh is you can't make the complexity matrix slide. Like you can't have 50 protocols to choose from and then everybody is, is, is you know, one is feeding this protocol and the other one is, is, is pulling from this protocol um, because then, then you're really not compliant to anybody because then, you know, you need to have the matching products which happen to speak those two protocols. And that's why you narrow the choice down and you say, here's three protocols, pick one of the three and, um, and then, and that makes integration more real. But if you support 50, 50 different protocols, the choice, the, the likelihood that you find two products which actually speak both, uh, because it becomes slimmer. And that's my that's my the core of my concern. Okay, I think we're probably at our time box, but um, I would really I'm interested in getting this. Like I'm happy to compromise on this PR, but I'm like the thing that I would most like is to get a version of this, like with whatever caveats we need. Like, like if I have a proprietary protocol, I want to be able to say, here is how I'm supporting cloud events. And if you want to do it too, here's how. Like, that's what I want. Yeah, I was going to suggest it's, it's some sort of trying to find that middle ground position is maybe Clemens. Would it be possible for you to add a comment in here to state what you would feel comfortable with, with some sort of, with what your proposal would be for what to do with these things? Uh, unless your position is... It sounds nothing. like his position is <laughs> I don't want it, though. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just wondering, is, Clement, is there a, a middle ground position that you could have something that you could live with I, I think a, i think a catalog of implementations which um you know support support cloud events i think that's okay i'm just i'm i am i, I just i would like the spec set and, and what looks like technical documents to be constrained to those which which drive interoperability across products um and so let me, yeah, I'll, I'll let me comment on, let me comment on this, and then basically summarize summarize my my stance here. I don't, yeah. I, I, care, I, care, I care about us going to, together to a plug fest, you know, and then go and and write some code that allows us to plug things together, and then we should not have to go and pick up fifty different adapters to make sure that uh, you know one can talk to the other because we're not building integration products, we're building regular damn software and we should constrain ourselves to a few choices so that we don't get stuff but, complicated. No, we're, we would be constraining everybody though. Like we're saying like, if you want to support cloud events, get on one of these like three or four bandwagon. Yeah. And, and, no, and that drives the drop say, Like use our thing no matter what you're using, like just start using it now. And that's the way to get to get adoption. That's yeah. what I Yeah, see, that, that, as, as I said, that's the difference. I don't want to have adoption at all costs. I want to have adoption of interoperability. Okay, so let, let, we're slightly over time, so let's do this. Clemens, if you could put a, a comment or proposal or something in there to, because right now it appears Rachel has a proposal and then we have the other, the other side is basically saying do nothing. And I actually think there may be something in the middle there. So maybe if you could write what your view of a middle ground position would be and we get uh, some discussion going and maybe circle around uh, the real answer at some point. Can I can I also ask like I'm like Clemens and I are dominating the conversation, but I would also like if you just like have an opinion on this and like I would appreciate knowing like what the temperature of the room is. So if you feel so moved by the spirit, I would love for you to like add a comment on the PR or just like I don't know, let me know somehow. Because like if, if I'm like out on the deep end, let me know. But like that's what I'm that's what I think. Yes, thank you for that reminder. Yes, please, people comment in the issue itself, just since we're over time. All right, so I think we beat that one pretty well. Um, 
Christoph, would you like to talk to where we are on your minimum size PR? Yeah. Um, okay, I won't go through the whole uh, background of it. Um, basically, last time we ended up saying, or we were discussing if we should have a hard must. Or basically, we ended up in two places. Uh, what should the actual size be? And then um, the other one, should we have a must or should, because we um, we discovered some cases where maybe a must is too harsh. Let's say you have an IoT or an edge device that doesn't have enough bandwidth or memory or is constrained in some other way. Um, I then proposed a third option, which is a, well, basically um, for me, the point is, well, some people will, will write a middleware and some people will write the end consumers. What I want is that all middleware sort of work on a consistent way. And then if someone as an end consumer goes and, and drops something, it's maybe their own fault that they can't consume events. But the bad part is sort of, I write a, um, a good consumer in the end. There's another good producer in the front, but some of the middleware that is plugged in between just randomly drops events. That's not, uh, that's kind of what I want to prevent here. Um, so that's why I proposed the third option that says, okay, you must support it except um, when you are a consumer uh, that is heavily restrained. So basically everyone who writes a middleware that runs in the cloud has to accept these limits. Um, but if you're a consumer and you happen to have these constraints, then you don't. Um, okay. That's where we ended up, yeah. Okay, and there were some comments <clears throat> put into the PR since then. We had one person vote for your new option. Uh, a couple of people, I think maybe four or so, voted for option two, which is change the must to a should. And Kathy, it seemed like she can go with either the first or the second. Anybody want to chime in on the call now to add their opinion? Mark, you're Yeah, on I, I was one of the plus ones for should. Okay. To, to relax a little bit. Okay, that definitely seems, of the limited people that did voice an opinion, that definitely is leading the way as of right now. Anybody else want to say anything? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll speak up here. Um, personally, I, I would prefer option two as well, uh, only because I think the third option is, is fine, other than I think you get the same results with a should, um, or strongly recommended, actually, if I prefer it, but either way. Um, I, I, I don't like the idea of a must with an out because that to me means, well, why not just make it a should or strongly recommended? But that was just my take on it. Anybody else have an opinion? Okay, so how would you guys look, move, like to move forward on this? We don't have 100% um, agreement. Do we want to put this up for some sort of vote and let that decide it? Or how would you guys like to work on this? Keep hashing through, discussing it. Kathy, so, you're coming off mute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Christoph. Yeah, I think option two is good and should, but should also be lower size when we change to should. Because, you know, once we put a size there, uh, I think, you know, um, if we put a size that can be applied to more use cases or more uh, component, I mean, more event consumers, I think it will be good. People will try to you mean it's sure people would like to be compliant with that size. So Kathy, I don't know if it was just my connection or not, but you cut out a little there in the beginning. Are you suggesting that we do one and two or? or... Yeah, yes. Okay. I think, you know, if, um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, if we can give it a smaller size and then put should, I think more, um, I mean, more people will, will really do this, be compliant. Okay, so you're suggesting one and two, okay. Uh, Christoph, were you gonna say something in there? Um, I'm okay to uh, compromise on a should or strongly recommend. The only thing I really wanna have is that uh, sort of everyone in this group then agrees to honor that limit. So basically then I would also wanna pick the 64 kilobytes if uh, Clemens or event grid basically wants to keep that limit on their side, then we should have that limit sort of that everyone in the group agrees to support with the products that we build here. Okay. I, yeah. I would be very happy if that was the case, yes. I, just I would, I would still be 
I would still like it should rules. So Clemens, just refresh on our, the 64K is within the limit for you guys, right? Yeah, 64K is our limit. And, and, and based on, as I said, based on principle, and not necessarily on, on architecture only, but also principle. Okay, so I'm hearing a couple people now saying we should do both, um, 64K and should. Jim, I know you asked for one more week and we're definitely not voting this week. Um, but is there anything else you'd like to say, Jim, since you did kind of speak up there? Uh, no, I don't think I have anything to add at this time. So. Okay. What are the, what do people think in general? What do they do like that general direction of 64K and loosen the must to a should? Hi, this is Vladimir. I think we can go with should. I'm, uh, I can, I can be convinced that should, should would work fine. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Vladimir. Anybody else? Okay. What I'm, what I'm thinking I'm basically hearing is do Kathy's suggestion of lower the limit and go with the should. And so what I'm wondering is maybe what we should do is um, ask Christoph to modify the PR based upon that and then see if we can vote um, next week on it. What do you guys think about that direction? I'm going to take silence as consent. Okay. Uh, Christoph, are you okay with that? Yes, let's do it. Okay, I know one of your big concerns is just to get a number in there and that would be 64. Okay, so. Um, okay, so you'll get that on there. Yep. Um, okay, revisit. Oh, maybe vote, I should say, because we don't know for sure. Let's help what people's reaction to it is. All right, cool. Um, okay, let's go back to the claim check one. Do, 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 do. Did anything happen since last week on this one? Not really. We quickly presented it last week. Uh, Clemens made a comment, which I, I can maybe re walk through it if anyone uh, likes that. Um, yeah. What was Clem what was Clemens' comment? Was it in the PR itself? No, it was in the call. Um, yeah. Basically, the comment was, um, "Why do we need a data ref? Um, people, or why should this be like a top level thing on the spec? If you want to point to something, you can also just embed it in the data itself." Is that correct, Clemens? Yeah, I, f I didn't find this. Uh, uh, uh... I didn't find it necessary because you can have in, in the data, obviously, you could point to multiple different uh, uh, objects that are external um, instead of just one. So this seems like this seems like a very specialized case of having exactly one URI in, inside of data. Well, that is not the, if I may respond, that is not the intention. The intention is um, you have a data object which then in turn may contain other URI references uh, or URIs. But here is like the main outer data, data object does not fit within your message and mm -hmm. then you're instead putting it into the data ref. So then if you catch that, so you can kind of replace both. Either you have the data, you can also take it away and replace it with the data ref and then another part can come in, um, load the data ref into it or well, what is behind the data ref and replace the data ref with the data again? It, it, yeah, I think, I think my, my, my point is it is, um, it is just as easy to go and put a, a URI into data, an URI object into data, um, than having a first class construct for this. Like, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of a lot of scenarios easier to force everybody to implement that to implement that pattern. So, uh, Clement, 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 so on this one. Oh, the, um, the, let me go to the speaker queue first. Uh, Jim, your hands up. I, I'm just. Uh, I think one of the other things that Clemens had uh, touched on last time was the fact that you know just having a reference to something could be potentially dangerous if you don't know the size of the thing you're pointing at or maybe what it is. Yeah, so I, I understood that concern. 
Um, I again, you know, this seems to be double whammy for me because I I think I was one of the original instigators for this as well. Um, um, again, my intention here was to say if this is something that a lot of people are going to dream up by themselves because we set this limit of 64k or whatever it is, whatever we finally agree on, um, shouldn't we prescribe a method where people can um, you know, uh, work around that limit if they have to? Uh, and so that was really, again, my only drive was to say, let's just show people a way to do it rather than everybody coming up with their, every implementation coming up with their own way to do it. Um, so it was more of a, um, a design pattern, which was then codified. Right. right, and that's actually why I raised my hand was, oh, Clement's a question for you. Let's say we decide not to add the attribute and we tell people to stick a URL inside the data field. Uh, wouldn't we still need some, something in the spec that tells people exactly how it, should, how it should work or how it should look to ensure that we have interoperability so, so exactly, so we don't get what Jem is saying, which is everybody does it their own way, basically. I would explain the claim check pattern in the in the in the um, in the guidance. But wouldn't we need to when we need to format or, or specify what the format should look like if you choose to stick it in the data field? I mean, is it is it simply that there's no wrap around it, or is there a URL wrap around it? You know, things like that. So one of the so a reference to an external reference to a lar to a large object you would you would point to. Um, could be could be manifold, right? It could be it could be that you're pointing to um, a a large graph that sits in some in some document database that you want to go and reference, and where you speak a particular protocol to get at it. Let's say you're pointing to a record in a Mongo database, and it's impossible to go and set an entire record of the Mongo database with all the dependent dependencies with it. So you basically point to it, or you have a large file or you have a video, or you have, I mean, there's all kinds of do documents you can have, and you need to go and further qualify them, and how you qualify them, and probably how you give further hints, like the size of the document, et cetera, might differ based on the kind of document that you have. So I'm, I'm, I have a, I also have, like it was said, a fidelity concern around that link, um, in terms of how much metadata you further need to make sense out of that, out of that um, uh, reference. Um, and and that this might not be the only this might not be the only link that's sufficient to go and express that. Basically, giving uh, a, a client that receives an that receives an event uh, a choice of um, of what they might of of what they might want. Like say, let's say you have a an image database and you store a new picture, right? And you send them an event. Um, the event is about the picture, and you ultimately want want to have the picture, but maybe in the data you want to give them a choice of getting either thumbnail or the original resolution or a choice of thumbnails. And so all of a sudden you're pointing to four versions of the same or ten versions of the same picture. While it's theoretically a claim check pattern, because you're not sending the image, but you're sending a pointer to it, you're actually sending a very qualified set of, of links um, that you then further declare with. Uh, and this image resolution format is set, but it's it's application specific. Okay, so, uh, so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from because that's our, the principle that we have in general in in our product is to always point to stuff and never and rarely carry the stuff. So we'll always have these references inline in the in the data and then leave it to the application to go and interpret in, interpret them accordingly. And here, this seems like a the, the most rudimentary case specialized. Okay, uh, Christoph, your hands up. Yeah, um, let me as a, <clears throat> I think that this thumbnail example doesn't really, well, would be a misuse of this URI reference. That's not what I would like to use it for. Um, that is my point. So um, <clears throat> I think there are, there are valid use cases. So um, for example, AWS um, for SQS, they have a limit or they have built in their, at least in their Java SDK, a way for that you in the Java SDK can say, I'm sending this message and then someone else with the same SDK can, can consume this message. So if you're sending a message below that limit, it will be put directly into SQS. If you're sending a message above that limit, it will actually be put into S3. And then the 
a pointer to that S3 object is put into the message and then um, the SDK on the other side will pull out that uh, data from the S, uh, S3 blob storage. So the good thing is as a, both as a producer and as a consumer, you really don't know if that happens in the background or not. So that is, I think something that, that is worth considering having. I'm not sure how many people run into this particular issue. Um, for me, that is in, in my daily work, this is often a case where I really don't, or let's put it this way, I already point to the um, object itself by having that source. But what I'm sending in a message is often uh, a change set and that can be very small or it can be very big, even for the same event type. So um, that's kind of the issue that I have. And then I dynamically want to make a difference whether I'm embedding the data or they have to fetch it somewhere else. <clears throat> and if, if it would be like, if my consumers don't have to care about it, that's good for them, I think. Okay, uh, I think Kathy, you're going to have the last word on this for this week. Uh, go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I think you know. I think this this um this PR is talking about out of band and data, right? Not in band. So I I think you know uh, it's a good thing to have that because if you want to send a either large large set of data, you want to not to send it in band or restriction does not allow you to send it in band. So it's good to have a data reference. But whether we have you know one URI, URI or several, that's another thing we can discuss. I think you know there are use cases that you know this definition will will help a lot. Okay, thank you, Kathy. So there are a lot of interesting ideas they mentioned, and in particular, uh, Kathy and, and Clemens, you guys have some some interesting thoughts on this. Maybe you guys could add some comments to the PR to get some discussion going offline. Um, yes, sir. And, then we, and we can see what how that how that plays out next week. Uh, let's see quickly. Just last uh, thirty seconds or so. <clears throat> I heard Kathy. Sonia, are you there? What about Ginger? Yes, I'm here. All right, Sonia, you still there? Uh, no, Sonia had to leave. What about Alex? Okay, is there anybody I missed for roll call? Okay, thank you guys very much. And please do take time to comment on those outstanding PRs. Um, and with that, you guys are free to go, except for the people who would like to potentially present at the next KubeCon. So those guys, please stay on the call. We'll just give people a second to see. Hi, okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, is it that? Yes, it is that. Is what what? Uh, I was I was just I I was sure I had something in this time slot that is literally this session is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that neat the way that works out? I, yeah. I, it's it's been a blur today, so. <laughs> I hear you. I, I might be kind of grumpy. I'm I'm missing lunch and I'm getting really really snippy and hungry. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Uh, let's see. Okay. Where am I? Yeah, I'm not a happy camper when I don't get to eat. Where am I going? Demo, demo, demo. Let's see. We still have, whoops, okay. So who should be here? Let's see. We know Clemens is here. Scott's here. Christoph's still here. Vlad's still here. Chad is, wasn't on the call. Dan is still here. Okay. Everybody who's supposed to be here is here. Good. So we can get started. All right. Mr. Scott, if you don't mind, I'm going to lean on you to drive more of this discussion since this baby's your idea in terms of how you want to proceed. No, no, this is the demo. I'm sorry, what are we talking about? Oh, gosh, darn it. <laughs> I'm mixing up things. Um, okay, you're right, darn it. Okay, so in that case, presentations. Okay, so, um, oh, darn it. I'm gonna go find nope. you a granola bar. I, yeah, exactly, I blame it on the hunger. So actually, I'm trying to remember, there was, um, there are a couple of comments. I could have sworn I put, oh yeah, maybe it's in the invite because people didn't make comments on ideas for what to talk about. And I know I put them somewhere, but I think I put them in the. Invite. Yeah, I think there is a doc, I remember. Well, no, there's not a doc here, I found it. Uh, I'll move this later, so hold on a minute. There we go. So these are the ideas that I've mentioned so far. 
Okay. So um, let's focus on the intro first. I think based upon the description of, way, of the way intro calls are supposed to be, or the intro sessions are supposed to be, we have to at least give the generic one that we give almost every time, which is what is cloud events? Why are we here? Why do we matter? That kind of stuff. Uh, it does not necessarily have to be a very long session, but I do think we have to at least give that brief intro for people who don't know what the heck it is. But after that, we're then free to fill the time with whatever we want. So as a follow-on for intro session, do you get, what would you guys like to see the next topic or set of topics be? Uh, maybe like the hello world of uh, how to use it, like how to send an event. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is, is it, would this be like a hands-on, here's how you use it, or are you just a demo of seeing an action? What, what, what were you thinking there? Uh, yeah, maybe like actually draft out a, uh, like a simple application using one of the SDKs. Okay, live SDK usage. Okay, whoops, can't type. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, I think I think for this for this particular where we are, for the I'm a big fan of 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 showing um, plenty of code. Um. Well, so so spend more time in the SDKs and and if already there um, some product integration um, scenarios. Um, more than than talk about theory because we care about the you know people adopting it before that having code showing code is good and and for me the the those conferences seem to be ones where code showing code and, and demos is very appreciated um, mm -hmm. and more than than you know dry architectural conceptual talks yeah code and demos um and like tips from experienced people in this in the generic intro, is there a uh, like here was the world before cloud events, and this is why we're trying to make it better? Yeah, like, I, I, think, I, I think that's 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 that should be in there. Like, where where did we come from? Why do we exist? And and here's the here's the thing: we we have kind of a brief overview, and then from there it should really be. And this is what we can do now. Yeah, is there like a a big like final wow like? Today, this is super hard without cloud events, but here's what we just did. Here's this crazy thing that we just connected. Uh, no, I don't think we have that yet, but that might be a good idea if we could think of one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't have the, the, how terrible the world was before. Uh, uh, I might have something to present on this, but I don't know if it'll be ready before then. Like we, um, the company I'm currently working with uh, is gonna implement the whole pipeline for automated deployments and the whole internal dev tools will be using cloud events. Uh, the main driver for this is the fact that we have to send the trace IDs around and we have to use um, SNS, SQS and stuff like that. And there is no easy way to use uh, tracing with that. And cloud events seems like it's going to be a good fit. I had exactly zero time to test it, and I'm super annoyed by that. <laughs> okay. Well, am I correct in assuming that that would fall under sort of these live demos or descriptions of how we're actually how, how people are actually using it today in, in real world scenarios, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, hoping that it'll be ready, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, it sounds like we have a good start in terms of what we might be able to talk about at an intro session. And I think we only have 35 minutes. So between these things, we should be able to fill up the 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so after maybe a 10 minute highlight of who we are. So let's quickly switch over then to the deep dive session. Uh, what are you guys thinking about for there? As <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think another hello world would this time actually show extensions and what you could do with that. Yeah. For example, like the trace ID is cool. Hold on. God, I can't type. 
okay. the tracing in the deployment pipeline I just spoke about is planned to be implemented with extensions. So it might be better to move it here or get more in depth here. I I don't know. Okay. Oh. And again, all of this is very much theoretical right now. We, we are doing this today with Istio. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a, a good news on that front, um, by the way, that in the W3C open tracing spec, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. Um, that's, being, that's being referenced from there. Um, that is now also getting an MQTT and a, um, uh, an MQP binding. So we can go and align not only on HTTP, but we can also align on the, the, the MQP binding. Neat. Yeah, I know that because I, I had to review it. Hmm. Okay, so I'm trying to think. Is a deep dive, is there anything we could do there aside from just showing it being used? Um, there might be some gotchas, like with some of the, you know, uh, here's, we now support protobuf, but like, well, it's, you know, not really ideal. So that goes back to sort of lessons learned or um, a deeper lesson learned talk, right? Yeah. yeah, I guess that's that's tips and like here's here's where the the, the edges of cloud events uh, exist. Okay. Yeah. So, so there is a there is a yeah. uh, there's there's the don't use this don't use this to do uh, uh, general messaging. Uh, 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 aspect there as well, right? There's like patterns and anti-patterns, anti and I think I can, I can, the anti-pattern section is pretty long because you can bet that people will come and make the reply to extension and they really, really, they really, really shouldn't. Like things you should not do, please. Uh, yeah. I think we should add that just to torment you, Clemens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do not do that. So if we, if we, oh, go ahead, Christoph, sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure if, um, kind of, we assume that the people who are there probably don't use it yet and may have only heard the intro. Does it really make sense to go and talk to like, okay, this is the stuff that doesn't work and, you know, more focus on, on the positive examples of what it can be used for and not, you should do this, this, this but then they don't really have an idea in their head what they should do with it. Yeah, I think you, you mix the both. Both you, you do both things. Maybe the, it sounds like uh, we should do a, a, a quick intro of like what is eventing and where, where cloud events fits in like mm -hmm. a technical perspective. And then perhaps uh, maybe we could show performance of cloud events for different protocols. Uh, that is, that is enormously difficult because you're really not showing cloud events perf. So oh, quick question. Yeah, I was just trying to think of like technical things that you could show in a, a deep dive. Yeah. So let me just, just for the note taking purposes, Scott, when you said what is eventing and where it fits, do you see that as a deep dive thing or as an intro thing? I kind of think it's a, maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, I think that should be covered in the intro. Okay. So we'll think, okay, we'll cross that out, but even maybe for that then. Performance, is that, uh, that, that one scares me. Um, mainly because I, it, it comes awfully close to potentially slamming someone, something, some product. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd be cautious of that. It's probably it, it. It might be subjective, or not as objective as we might want. You okay if we drop that, Scott? That scares me a little. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Okay. Okay. What other things could we do for deep dive? I mean, we only have thirty-five minutes, and Vlad's thing, or whatever we come up with, whether it's Vlad's or something else, could take quite a while. So that could be. We may not have as much time as we think. I mean, is this are these two high-level topics good enough for a deep dive? 
where does the demo fit in here? Excellent question. I forgot all about that. So, I'm kind of wondering whether we do a little tease of the demo in the intro and then perhaps do a deeper dive discussion about the demo. Because I'm wondering whether the demo can tie into some of the lessons learned in some way. Mm. You have to learn those lessons first. <laughs> well, trying to implement the real world scenario that you have in your demo may expose some, of, some lessons, I would hope. Yeah. That's an excellent, it is an excellent question though. I don't know, what do you guys think? Where would you want to do the demo? I don't think we have another time slot to do it at the conference uh, itself. We've done, we've done the demo in the intro uh, in the last time, and I think the demo in, in the intro makes more sense to at least show. Well, it depends on what the demo will be, but kind of showing the demo off in the, in the intro is a good cliffhanger for the deep dive session. Um, because everybody wants to see code. And so you'll show the demo there and say, well, if you want to know how we put this together, then go and come to the deep dive. Yeah, maybe the, the actual code moves to the deep dive. Like we show the demo, we, we dive down, but, but you start with uh, like, here's the hello world using one of the SDKs. And this is how easy it is. And then we, from this, we built the, the demo you, you saw in the intro and we can show it again. Okay. Well, it seems to me that a lot of this decision also may be uh, based upon how the demo actually looks and feels and how much time it takes to actually run through it, right? Because if the demo takes 15 minutes to run through, that's very different than you can show it in five minutes, right? Yeah, that may yeah. influence yeah, where we sure. actually show it. So maybe we should hold off and leave it as a placeholder in both spots to figure out where it goes once we feel like the demo is fleshed out more. How's that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and I agree with the other points uh, that might belong in both, um, depending on the complexity. Okay. Okay. Um, I feel like we have a fairly good starting point for an outline. What do you guys want to do in terms of next steps here? Go off, think about this. Put up, I could put this into a document, ask you guys to then comment offline to, to try to expand upon the thoughts. Um, or we can talk about it now. We have 45 minutes. Unless you guys want to go eat. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we know Doug's vote. <laughs> I have one more, one more question and then I can go get pizza or there something. Um, this is very cloud events focused. And at the last KubeCon in Europe, I really like how there was also chat about how are you using cloud events? What issues do you have? And general talking about this kind of stuff. Would it be worth to have uh, something like this to, I don't know, just get where the community is with it and see if we need any other working groups or stuff like that? I'm not 100% sure I followed that. Are you, are you suggesting a sort of discussion with the audience members to find out what their view is of cloud events and where, where we want to take it? I'm not, or, I'm Both sorry, I got lost there. Both events and how they're using serverless and what issues they're hitting. Like more generic serverless work group uh, stuff, I guess. I don't know. Again, just that's like a birds, like a birds of a feather type thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Now, I, I think they're planning on having a serverless day. I can't remember the exact term they use for it. Um, I'm wondering if it if it's better to to save that discussion for for that thing or take up part of our time. In cloud events, because it's it's a bit of a shame that well, actually, let me back up. We originally were given the option of having a an intro and a deep dive for both cloud events and serverless, because technically it's two separate groups. Do we want to change our mind and and not have just two? We can have four sessions. I we have enough people. Like a demo of uh, serverless. Uh, platforms or on Kubernetes. So there might be interest. I don't know. We can vote. I, 
I, I would think there'd be interest from the audience um, given uh, how popular serverless is right now. Yeah. So do you guys want me to go back and ask for two sessions or just one for serverless? Maybe one of the long ones. That's an idea. Yeah, that might be an option. It, it might be good to have an intro for serverless even. Um, I don't know uh, how much people understand all of it um, or just laying out um, kind of what, uh, what it looks like from a CNCF perspective and a Kubernetes perspective. Okay. Okay. I can, I can go off and ask and see if it's too late. Because then, yeah, Vlad, I think that covered that. We could talk about your topics in there. I'm sorry, go ahead, Christoph. Do we as a work group sort of have enough content or will we refresh the white paper? I mean, I, I like the idea in general, but um, I don't see how it lines up with what we currently do. Interesting question. I, I kind of view this as a sort of follow on for the working for the serverless working group itself to say, okay, look, we put up this white paper. We could talk about where we see the state of serverless in general and you know, talk about all the various um, serverless products that sit on top of Kubernetes and you know, open faz, Knative, all these other things. And then sort of turn it into like a birds of a feather kind of thing like, that someone mentioned and just get the audience engaged and say, okay, where do you guys think serverless should go? What do you think the service working group should tackle another topic, right? Because in the past we talked about, you know, what should the next thing be? And we picked workflow, but that's not getting a whole lot of traction. So maybe there's just something else we should be focusing on and maybe we need input from the broader community so we're not just talking to ourselves. I don't know, that was my initial thought when, when you guys started heading down this path. Well, that sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Thanks. I agree. If I can remember what I just said. Okay, I'll write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get Doug a sandwich. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so you want a bird of a feather? Okay. What do you? What else, you guys? While I'm typing, you guys, what do you? What, what do you want to do next? Uh, for that. I think that the white paper has to be revisited, and because the landscapes changed pretty dramatically in the last year. Serverless has gone pretty big. Amazon's released a lot of new stuff. And there's Knative and a lot of the frameworks have rebased stuff, other technologies now. Okay. Yeah, keeping that document current would be useful. It's true. So should we do an update for this session Is it to, to prep for this session? Yeah, I, I think I think that's probably the uh, ethical thing to do. <laughs> yeah, we agree. Okay. But it's a lot of work. It is. It is. And I'm not doing it. <laughs> Such a definitive statement there, Clemens. Jeez. Well, you know, I, I just, I'm just looking at my, my backlog and I don't want to raise any expectations that I could. <laughs> Okay, um, anything else? Okay, so tell you what, um, let me take all this information, stick it into a doc, and we can noodle on it back and forth in there. Um, I will reach out to Dan Kahn to find out if we could, if it's too late to get one long session for the serverless working group. Um, do you guys wanna meet again next week, same time, same place? Sure. Uh, yeah. mm. Come on, Clement, say yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on. There, there, there was some. But it should work. Hang on. One second. Where's the. Well, we, are, we are meeting on Monday. Yeah, but that's to talk about the demo, right? Yeah. Uh, this week. Um, yes, I can do that. Next week works. Okay. I'm going to assume it's yes, Clemens. You don't, you don't have a choice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then just put an action item to uh, bring Doug a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. I I think, think, well, 
Well, what, what, what's funny is usually during the main call, if there's a, a, a topic that I know is going to take a while, I will just eat during the previous call. I just didn't get a chance to today. <laughs> I'll, I'll message you at 10 to grab a granola bar. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Anything on this you guys want to talk about? Uh, okay. I guess we, we need the answer to your action item before we understand who is officially on the roster because I need to start doing travel plans. That is true. So let me, okay, well, since I, since you've nagged me enough about this topic, Scott, which one of these would you like to run, if any? Uh, I would love either the intro or the deep dive. If I no, 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 within the, you know, <laughs> you can't be that broad. Um, I'm assuming each of these has at least two, two, two presenters. Yeah, right, right, right. I would. So which of these, which of the topics between the whole long list do you oh, want man. to sort of own? I think it'd be kind of cool to do the, uh, the live demo. Um, you talking about this one or up here? Well, yeah, whichever. Okay. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to do whatever, but I just want to know if I'm on the team. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get kicked off the island, Scott. Um, oh, no. Well, I because I know you 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 seem like you have a lot of constraints relative to uh, getting travel approval in the sense that you need to get it done sooner rather than later. So because you keep po poking me on that, so what I'd like to do is <clears throat> see if we can get agreement to at least put your name on, on one thing now. So at least you can not lie to your management team and say yes, you are you will be talking. Yeah, right. Um, and Vlad, you sound like you were going to do something here, or you're going to really, really try. What if we tentatively, Scott, put you on the hook for, in essence, part two of the intro to cover these things? Okay. What do people think about that? Is there anybody on the call who says, no, 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 you really want to do that? Okay. And then we could figure out the rest later. I mean, obviously, if you guys really um, want one of the particular topics, um, you know, speak up. Otherwise, we'll figure it out later. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Cool. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk again next week. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Do -do -do -do.